combating nutrition disinformation and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live. And we're here with another episode of Jimmy Rants. If you're brand new to Jimmy Rants, we get on here a couple of times a day, you guys. And what we do is we rant about some topic in the world of nutritional health. And the way we do that is we start off on Instagram Live. So go to JimmyRants.com and you'll have links to all this stuff I'm about to tell you. So go follow me on Instagram, L-I-V-I-N-L-O-W-C-A-R-B-M-A-N. And then you can engage live just like all these amazing people who are coming in right now to comment on what I'm going to talk about here today. Then if you missed the live, you can actually watch it on replay for up to 24 hours on Instagram. If you miss it there, because it does disappear after 24 hours, we throw it on over onto YouTube so you can see all the past episodes. Just type in a keyword search, Jimmy Rants, and you'll find all of the past episodes of this here show. And then finally, we have a pretty cool format of this show, the Jimmy Rants Podcast, which I'm a professional podcaster, been doing it for a very long time, since 2006. So it's pretty neat to be able to have this as yet another podcasting resource, Jimmy Rants over on Apple Podcasts. So go listen there. Again, you guys, all of this is at JimmyRants.com. Today's Jimmy Rants is all about the people who have made it their New Year's resolution or really any time of the year, but this is the day before New Year's Day, their New Year's resolution to go keto, okay? You know who you are. Maybe you're watching this video because you were looking up keto and trying to figure out information about keto. What's this keto thing about? And so you want to go keto as a New Year's resolution, you want to change your diet and you want to try to lose weight and get healthy finally. Great. Welcome to the fray. We're happy to have you. But what's going to happen in the next couple of days, weeks, maybe even months, is you're going to fall into one of two categories. Will your keto attempt be successful? Or will it be sabotaged? Okay, so I want to give the distinction here that there is a right way to do keto and there is a very wrong way, actually lots of very wrong ways to do keto. So let's start with the things that you should be doing right, okay? The right way to do keto is to come into it with the mindset that it's going to succeed for you. Okay, so a lot of people, they go on some given diet and they already go into it loathing that it's just not going to work. I've tried everything in the world. This one's not going to work either. And they have a pessimistic attitude about it. If you go into it with the hopes that it's going to do something amazing for your health, then don't be surprised when it does something amazing for your health. And I am a big believer in the power of the mind impacting the body. I seriously believe that if you tell yourself, I am going to be successful, then you will be successful at this. Of course, you've got to do all the nitty gritty stuff that makes keto keto. You can't go eat chocolate cake and uh, ding dongs, ho ho's, and drink Coca Cola and say, oh, but I believe I'm going to be successful. It doesn't work that way. But if you truly put your mind at ease and allow your body to embrace this way of eating as a permanent and healthy lifestyle change, guess what? You're going to probably succeed. And so I would highly recommend you learn about keto. There are so many books out there about keto now. Pick one. I've written several. Uh, my most famous one is Keto Clarity. It's very basic of keto that will teach you how to do this the right way, get you started off on the right foot. So get information, understand the importance of carbohydrate restriction, understand how you determine what your protein threshold level is, because protein isn't a freebie. You gotta have a certain amount of protein, but not too much. 
You also want to make sure you're getting ample amounts of a variety of fats that are from real food sources. So you want to make sure you're eating those to satiety. You want to try to mostly eat real whole foods. You want to sleep well. You want to get stress under control. You want to make sure that all of the uh, underlying causes that may have caused you to gain weight and get unhealthy. All of those medical issues are also checked so that you see if your hormones are out of balance, that you can get those back in balance again. If you do all of those things and on a daily basis commit to, I'm going to do this and I'm going to be successful, then you're going to be successful. Okay, that doesn't sound hard, does it? That doesn't sound hard at all. It's very implementable for anybody to do. But here is where the sabotage gets into place. Oh man, I wish I could have bread. Man, pasta was my favorite dish. I would have macaroni and cheese coming out of my ears and I just love mac and cheese and I can't have that anymore because I'm on this stupid keto thing. Man, I just, I don't understand. I'm just going to go in my cupboard and grab the cookies that I didn't get rid of. Uh, man, I'm just, I don't know. Is it even worth it? I, uh, sugar is life. I don't know how you give up this sugar. Oh my gosh, this is the worst diet ever. Oh my God. And you give up in three days. I ain't got time for people like you. Can I be honest? I think people like that don't want to change. If you want to change and you in your heart of hearts desire making the necessary changes to improve your weight and your health, then by golly, you're going to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and you're going to do whatever it takes to make that happen. I can't stand the lackadaisical attitude when it comes to making a change. Because if you're not ready, that's fine. Nobody's judging you for not being ready. But don't go into this with the pessimism that you're not going to succeed because you've already failed before you even started. So that's part of the sabotage that you can do on keto. Another thing, and I mentioned it in that little characterization there I just did, if you still got non-keto foods in the house, you got to get rid of that stuff. Because if it's around... Your brain's going to remember it's there and you're going to go grab for it. So get rid of it. There's no reason it should be there. And I know some people will say, well, I have kids in my house and I have a non-keto husband. Okay, great. But they need to keep that stuff away from you. They need to keep it in a separate cabinet with a lock and key so that only they can get to it, not you. Okay? And then you've got unsupportive friends and family and coworkers who will try to discourage you. Oh, I heard about that keto thing. You're going to die next week if you go on that and all this kind of stuff. And we've talked about those kinds of things pretty often here on Jimmy Rants. All of these saboteurs, you guys, are just lurking, waiting to discourage you from staying keto. So will your keto attempt be successful? Or will it be sabotaged? It's really up to you. And at the end of the day, it comes down to your mindset. Do you have it within your mind? Do you have it within every fiber of your being that you want this to be successful? Then guess what? You're going to do it. You're going to go take on the world. And you're going to succeed. If you don't succeed the way you want to succeed, for most people, that means weight loss. I want you to look at other things as well. Weight loss is important. Don't get me wrong. I get the people like that. But I want to reframe what success means. And I've talked about this before on Jimmy Rants as well. Getting your blood sugar levels under control. Getting your insulin under control. Lowering your inflammation levels, which is at the very heart of just about every disease you could possibly get. You don't get in a disease state unless you have inflammation in the body. So you want to look at your inflammation levels, blood pressure levels, all of these things that are so critical to your total health that go well beyond whatever your weight is. If you allow yourself to only get obsessed with the weight, then that's also going to be 
a saboteur on your keto diet. A lot of people shed uh, weight very fast on keto, so don't get me wrong. If that's your goal, you should lose quite a bit of weight eating keto. But others may not. Others may see improvements in how they feel, their energy levels, their blood sugar levels, their insulin levels all coming into line, and yet they still have weight on the body. And I want you to, if that's you, and that's going to be a lot of you watching this, if that's you, I want you to know you are a success as well. So making sure that your definition of what successful is will prevent you from being sabotaged when you go keto. All right, let's see what you guys have to say here. Welcome in, welcome in. Thanks for being here. Hello, hello. Uh, Joshua says, I've already been successful. Yes, you have. Very proud of you, man. Started keto this year and is rocking it. Hello, Dory. Thanks for being here. Hello, everybody. Lots of people here today. Welcome in, welcome in. I think educating yourself will help, says Kathleen Rogers 184. Yes, always, always, always seek to learn more. And guys, I've been at this since 2004 was when I made... The switch. In fact, tomorrow, uh, 15 years ago, tomorrow will be my 15 year anniversary since I changed my diet forever. And if I stopped learning with what I knew on January 1st, 2004, if I had stopped learning at that point and never learned anything else again, I would have never been able to progress to the point that I could now teach you guys all these lessons that I've learned. And I fully intend on remaining a student of this for the rest of my life. And I think everybody that's watching this right now, if you're not a student of your own body and of all of these things and how they react in your body and how to keep yourself as optimally healthy as possible, if you're not daily being a student about it, it doesn't take like hours upon hours like studying for a calculus test, but at least listen to podcasts, engage in content, uh, read books, that kind of thing. Never stop learning. That should be a hashtag for every keto person online is uh, hashtag never stop learning because we all, all of us, even the, the doctors that are out there prominently, every single person can still learn more, always educating yourself. So you're right, Kathleen. Hello, hello. Thanks for being here. Uh, please don't educate yourself out of starting. Not starting is sometimes why people don't succeed, says Alterna Suites. Uh, thank you for that, by the way. Um, I think my concern with that, though, is sometimes people start and they do what they think is keto. And so they go and they get any uh, bar in the grocery store that has the word keto. They go down to Walmart and they see Slim Fast has a keto line of products. Uh, and so they look for the mainstream version of keto. And so they buy all this junk. And that ain't keto. And so that's my concern. That's why I always say educate yourself. But it doesn't take long to educate yourself. Most people can read Keto Clarity in a couple of days at the at the most. Um, it's about a nine-hour audio book. So if somebody wanted to listen to the audio book, they could hear it in uh, one to two days if they listen to it in chunks. And so um, you're right. They should go ahead and start. But as they're going through it, learn things and then apply what they learn along the way. Nick H. 1961, low protein equals to poor muscle hydropathy. Building some muscle is important, especially as we age. Uh, nobody's talking about low protein, dude. Um, we said moderating down on the protein. There's a huge difference between low protein and moderate protein. Moderate protein is getting enough so that you don't have um, muscle loss take place. And your body gets all the amino acids that it needs, but you don't want to overload your body with protein when you're trying to be ketogenic. Tracy does keto. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. That's true. That's true. Balance, nourish, heal. Mindset is so important. I would say if you didn't have mindset, you could have all the knowledge in the world about how to do keto if you don't have the proper mindset. Um, 
knowledge means nothing unless your mind is ready to go there. Uh, Amy says, I think we have to hit rock bottom in order to change. Sadly, that's true. Uh, for me, 15 years ago, I was the day before starting my New Year's resolution to lose weight, um, which ended up becoming a new life resolution to get healthy. But I was 410 pounds on December 31st, 2003, did not know that I weighed over 400 pounds. I thought in my head I was about 330 and I was actually 410. When I went to weigh the next day, I was driving actually this part of town I'm in now. I was over there. The Gold's Gym was the only place that had a scale that allowed me to step on it so I could see the first number was a four. And when my heart sunk, that's all she wrote. That was what I needed to know I needed to do something. I'll talk more about my story tomorrow uh, on the 15th anniversary of my change. Uh, we had that craving issue, but just started cooking and baking more and found healthier alternatives. Yes, that's true, Balance Nourish Heal. You can find alternatives to just about anything. Uh, ba -ba -ba, Keto Angela, I hate it when people use the term cheat. Cheating is something you do to get closer to a finish line. The word should be sabotage. Yes, Angela, you know I'm not a fan of cheat. I think if you decide to allow yourself something that I call a dalliance uh, in your diet, in your keto diet, if it's a dalliance that you choose to allow in there, you're not cheating. It's a part of your keto journey, but you've made a conscious choice that that's what you wanted at that moment. Now, you deal with the consequences of that choice, but you're still keto. Everybody's like, oh, I fell off the wagon because I cheated, and, and I've talked about this before. No, you hadn't. No, you hadn't. You made a conscious choice to make something that was less than ideal. Now deal with the consequences and get right back on the wagon again. Bonnie Lene, that's my biggest issue, falling off keto, going crazy, buying ice cream, chips, etc. Sabotage, it's hard for me uh, with that right in front of me. Well, don't do that, Bonnie. <laughs> don't go buy the ice cream and the chips. And I think that gets to the heart of a whole nother issue I could rant about uh, of what would draw you back to those foods. What I would say is stock your cupboards at home with foods that are keto friendly, that when you feel that way and you feel like you're um, not going to be able to stay keto, enjoy the foods that you can have. Maybe you're not having enjoyable foods in your ketogenic lifestyle. Choose the ones that are enjoyable and you'll never want to get off of it. Amy says, my husband knows that he can't bring bad food into our house. I informed him we are going carnivore this month. Good thing he doesn't cook. Well, and, and most men should love the carnivore diet. Uh, if you're eating basically all meat all the time, I don't know any man that does not like that unless they're a vegan or vegetarian. Maybe the 30 bananas a day guy doesn't like that. <laughs> Uh, ba, 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 ba. nine months of carnivore have never felt healthier, says Tracy. Good job. Uh, uh, ba, ba, ba. any update on the keto restaurant in Spartanburg? No, Jamie. Sadly, the last I heard uh, was the lady that was dealing with that has had to jump through a bunch of hoops. Um, it's just the restaurant business is hard. So, um, I'll let you guys know. I'll do a Jimmy Rants live within her restaurant if she ever does get it open. I'm in this forever. Being insulin resistant is who I am, Tracy says. No, being insulin resistant is not who you are. It's what you are. Who you are is that beautiful, lovely person that is trying desperately to heal your body. What you are is the insulin resistant, uh, insulin resistance that is being the devil in your in your life right now. So don't identify as insulin resistance being who you are. Just as someone with type 2 diabetes is not type 2 diabetes. That's not who they are. It's what they have. And so I, I'm a big believer in kind of framing the message so that you can actually heal. Because if you identify I'm insulin resistant, well, what happens if you heal your insulin resistance? You're no longer insulin resistant. What happens to who you are if you have that identity? I know that gets deep, but stay with me on that one. 
Ketogenic nurse says lifelong learning. Yep. Congratulations on being strong and true. Thank you, Bishop. Uh, Nana PDV, my family is beginning to look at the science, making changes based on what they see in me, which is making my grandkids healthier. And that's huge. That is awesome. That is awesome. And that's the legacy that you can pass on to the next generation. That is so cool. Community is vital as well, says ketogenic nurse. I can't agree more. It's one reason I love doing these Jimmy rants because I got my posse. You guys are my peoples. And so if I'm able to come on here and be an encouragement to you, and I've had so many of you uh, send me messages of, oh, I was getting ready to mess up or I was getting ready to fall off of keto and I watched the Jimmy rants and I was like, nope, can't do it. Jimmy's holding me accountable. So I'm really happy that that uh, that's what this is serving. But there's a lot of Facebook pages that are supportive. I know uh, my friend Dory, who's on here, has a great Facebook page that you can go get support. Um, there's just so many ways now. And the keto community, for the most part, is very loving and open and accepting and encouraging to other people. I used to self-sabotage, but not anymore. Terry, 4494. Yeah, a lot of people do, and I think a lot of it is rooted in the frustration with dieting um, and traditional dieting with, that are low-fat diets that are undesirable. Those things kind of lead people down this path of, all right, I got to seek a shortcut to this because this sucks. But the thing with keto is you don't want to sabotage because it is so pleasurable. In fact, some people write to me and they say, I can't believe I'm on a diet eating bacon and butter and and whole eggs and full fat meats and cheeses and all the things you get to have when you go keto. And so they don't they feel like they're cheating when they're doing exactly perfect on keto. So you never want to quote cheat ever again. Uh keto 6 months on January the 9th. Awesome Nana, that's awesome. Restarting tomorrow, Wanda said. Excellent. Uh, I've been lucky or smart, but I haven't slipped at all. I work for my uncle every weekend. It's a junk food lover's heaven. Honestly, it makes me sick to my stomach thinking about eating any of it, says Crystal. I assume you work in like a candy store or donut shop or something like that. But yeah, those things, uh, they don't tempt me anymore. And maybe we'll talk about that on a future Jimmy Rants of how do you get to the point where those smells, uh, those foods that you thought you could never live without now become an afterthought and you don't even think about it. That's the way it is. There's a donut shop right there. I have no desire to go in there. None. None at all. In the, in the mall, they have a huge candy store. I have no desire to go into a candy store. All I think of is bunch of crappy garbage, rat poison that's going to spike my insulin and blood sugar levels. Boom. Keeps me out of there. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I do know if I mess up, I can go right back on it. Keto is very forgiving. Yes, Crystal, and I've talked about this before. This is why I'm not a fan of the whole fall off the wagon thing. So I've fallen off the wagon because I had one thing I wasn't allowed. So therefore, I should just give it all up. And I'm like, you're going to undo all of that work you did with keto just because you had one moment on the lips? No, don't do that. I meant to say it's hard when my husband brings garbage home. I guess I must realize I have to be stronger than him when he quits keto. Well, Bonnie, it's not about stronger than him. It's about keeping your eye on the ball of your goals. And if your goal is to be healthy and your goal is to continue to eat in such a way so that you can attain that health that you want, it doesn't matter what the hubs does. Let hubs become tubs, but you've got a goal in mind, right? So stick to that goal. And I get it. That's part of the sabotage I'm talking about in this rant. There will be people in your life that will make this hard on you. Does that make it harder? Yeah. Does it make it impossible so that you can't do it and you must give in to ice cream and whatever else you said that you eat? No. 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 
Uh, Keto Reality Olga the other day, I almost gave in at O'Charlie's. I looked over my shoulder and thought, what if Jimmy sees me? He's going to be so disappointed. Well, Olga, number one, I would not. I am not the keto police, nor, nor would I ever uh, pass judgment on anybody else's choices. What you choose to do is up to you. What I would say is, is it worth it? Whatever it is at O'Charlie's you wanted, is it worth it? Is it something that you really, really want and you feel like if you consume that, it's going to make you feel better and and in the long run going to give you the best possible health that you can have? And if you say yes, then I say go for it. Go for it. Or if you say no, but I really want it this time and I'll get right back on plan. Again, I would say go for it. I think life's too short, you guys. We try to make diet too much in a box. Um, and I saw Danny Vega talking about this the other day. He's my friend uh, here on Instagram, Keto Counterculture. But he was talking about on some podcast he was on that uh, he does carnivore. And somebody saw him eating cabbage with some meat that he had and that they called him out on it and said, well, you're not carnivore anymore if you're eating cabbage. And he's going, what? We have to keep the big picture, you guys. And we have to know that all of this is a pursuit towards health. And if that means you run into some bumpy roads along the way where you get something that you might not normally have, I don't think we need to sweat about it. Too many people fret over all those kinds of things. And to me, the stress that we put ourselves under because of those choices is far worse than whatever the choice is. So relax and then do what you got to do. I don't want any non-keto food, says Dory. I make a version of basically anything. My family isn't keto and it does not stop me. No, Dory, I, d I don't imagine anything would ever stop Dory. <laughs> Uh, same says uh, Lauren. Hello, Lauren. BB2781, amen. Thanks for being so positive and truthful. Hey, that's that's my jam. Crystal says, garbage has become like cigarette smoke. It just stinks. It really does. Alberto said, yesterday I ate at a Johnny Rockets and got a burger. The taste was okay, but later on I felt like blah. Yeah, a lot of those fast food restaurants... They put additives in like even like meat. So what you think is just meat actually is meat plus stuff. Uh, Christine and I got this really nice uh, smoked sausage and cheese platter from someone for Christmas. And she had some a couple of nights ago. And the next day she, she had a major headache and was throwing up because of the nausea of the, of the headache. It was bad. And we think something was in that meat that might have caused that. So yeah, be careful out there. Crystal says if you're emotional water uh, and you slip, you have just let it. You just have to let it go because you're gonna get, uh, guilt yourself into a bigger bump. Yeah, and see that's that's what I'm talking about with this keto attempt being successful or sabotaged. If you convince yourself that, oh no, I messed up, so therefore keto's out the window, when in actuality, if you just jump right back onto keto again, yeah, you'll take a few days to get back into ketosis and get everything back in line, but within a few days, you're right back where you were. So if you have a little bit of a speed bump along the way, it ain't a big deal. And I think the sooner we learn that, it's something I try to impart upon people that you haven't messed up just because you've had just a little something off plan. You haven't messed up. You've delayed your progress, but you haven't messed up. Keep going. So the bottom line in this Jimmy Ranch, you guys, is will your keto attempt be successful or sabotaged? And I think by now, you know the answer is it's up to you. You determine all the factors that go into how you feel about going into this keto thing. If you believe it's going to be successful, then don't be surprised when it's successful. If you don't believe it's going to be successful and you allow yourself to feel guilty when you have foods that you shouldn't have and you allow people in your life to determine 
what you should eat, oh, and or determine that your keto lifestyle is actually harming you in some way, you're going to be sabotaged and you are already failing before you even start this. So make that choice now before you even get started. The most beautiful thing about keto is that it can be measured unlike other diets. Yeah, other diets, really the only measurement that other diets have is weight. In keto, you can measure uh, ketones, you can measure blood glucose, you can measure weight, um, you can measure inflammation levels, you can measure triglyceride levels, you can measure HDL cholesterol levels, you can measure inflammation levels through a HSCRP, high sensitivity C-reactive protein. There are so many quantifiable ways to see how your body has changed as a result of going keto that it truly is the most scientific uh, diet you'll probably ever be on in your life. All right, guys, that is it for this Jimmy Rants. As always, head on over to jimmyrants.com and you'll see how this works. We start off on Instagram Live. So go follow me on Instagram. If you're watching this on YouTube, go follow me at Livin Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. And uh, then after that, uh, you can watch it for 24 hours if you don't watch me live. You can watch it for 24 hours. After that, we put it on YouTube. So go type in Jimmy Rance in a YouTube search. You'll find all the past episodes. And then finally, we have the best of the best moments of this here show on the Jimmy Rance podcast. All of this, you guys, is at JimmyRance.com. So until next time, we'll see you then.